Hello, YouTube. A friend of mine who lives in Toronto shared a post written about an incident that occurred on public transit. What I found interesting was the way the writer presented what happened. I'm going to read it to you, but I've removed the last name of the author because I don't know if she wants her identity to be public. Tonight, I got into a confrontation with an apparently famous, I didn't know this, local man named David Zankai. David Zankai, better known as Zanta, is a Toronto street performer who does push-ups in the street and on public transit, shirtless, wearing a Santa hat and making strange noises. He claims to be doing this to get himself famous so that people know that he unjustly lost custody of his daughter. He is also diagnosed as schizophrenic and bipolar. I've left links to information about him below, and here's a video of him doing his thing from a short documentary that was made. He was very large and strong. He got onto the subway and started storming around, yelling, doing push-ups and roaring, and ranting about how ladies and girls need to keep their knees together and stop showing their monkey to men on the subway. He went on for about five minutes about why men shouldn't let their girls out of the house dressed in spandex, and the male pedophiles and rapists and voyeurs wandering among us, and how women and girls are responsible for such men's reactions to them and know what they are doing when they dress in yoga pants and other tight clothes because men are only human. He was extremely loud and intimidating and very invasive of others' personal space. So I did some checking, and on his Facebook page, Xanta does indeed seem to be preoccupied recently with the way young women dress, seeming to feel that too many women dress inappropriately in his view. He then began walking up and down the subway car, dragging behind him a huge banner with a woman's bare legs, commenting on individual women's clothing and appearances and shaming them for anything revealing. He began to repeatedly target a girl who looked about 17 and was dressed in a tight workout outfit, yelling at her and shaming her for how she was dressed, pointing at her groin and breasts and telling her he could see her monkey. She was clearly very upset by this and kept staring out the window, trying not to make eye contact with him or cry. I was horrified at this and looked around at the men to see if any of them were going to respond. Most of the women were frozen in anxiety or fear that this guy was going to target them next and were trying not to call attention to themselves. None of them were doing anything. So this is clearly inappropriate behavior on the part of Xanta. But this is a mentally ill person we're talking about here. So there's a few things I want to point out about how this was written. First, how on earth can you tell that someone is 17 and not 18 or 16 or 15? She could have been 25 for all I know. Using the age 17 is clearly an attempt to make the situation one of an adult terrorizing a child rather than two adults. Also, note that the author looked to the men to see if they would do anything. Her first instinct was to assume that a man would step up to save the poor, defenseless child. Also note how she seemed to know what the other people on the train were thinking and feeling. Like She knew that the women weren't responding because they were frozen with anxiety and fear, but she didn't attribute these emotions to the men. Seems a little strange to me. Then he went to move towards her and yelled that he was going to take a picture of her and her monkey and went to take out his phone. She was so scared and humiliated and began to cry immediately. At this point, I got up 
and walked down the car and stood in front of her to prevent him from taking photos of her. He began yelling at me about what right do I have to stop him from taking photos and how this was for my own good as a woman. And I turned my back to him and began talking to her, asking what stop she was going to, telling her I was going to stay with her and that I was sorry this was happening. He began getting very verbally aggressive with me, so I turned and went through a few minutes of yelling back at him to leave us alone and stop acting like an asshole, ignoring him, continuing to block the girl with my body so he couldn't see her, etc. Still, no one did anything other than a couple of women close to me telling me not to talk to the man. They were clearly afraid he would come over. Okay, so this is a bit confusing. How can you yell back at someone and also ignore them? And these two women, did they tell her not to talk to Zenta before or after she got involved? The chronology of the story seems to be getting a little bit confused here. When we got to the next stop, some woman told the girl to get out and go to the next car. So, while I blocked the man's path to her, we moved to the door and she did that. Then began several more minutes of this man verbally harassing me and yelling at me. He then came and stood beside me and was clearly going to get out at my stop. We got out, he walked beside me, harassing me some more, and then he turned away and I realized he was following the girl into the next car. He was dragging his large banner behind him on the ground, and since I couldn't make it into the car in time, I ran and stood on the end of the banner that was sticking out, blocking the door from closing and giving myself time to get ahead to the next door and cut him off. This angered him a lot. I spotted the girl on the car, looking horrified that the man had followed her onto the car. I got in front of her again. The man was storming down the car towards us, continuing to yell, and the girl began to cry again. I began yelling at him repeatedly to leave her alone and get off the train, and telling others around us that he had been harassing her, other than one woman who quietly asked the girl if she was okay. No one did anything. This went on for another minute or so, until a woman came up to me and quietly told me who this guy was, and that he had a long history of bothering people on the subway, and sexually harassed her while she was in her teens and that he was banned from the subway. He ended up getting off one stop before the girl. I stayed with her nearly to the end of the subway line. When we got off, the girl and a few women thanked me for intervening. The girl was clearly terribly shaken up. This entire time, not a single man, other than that harasser, had said or done a thing. At the end of this, I stood and talked with a woman who had watched part of this, and the discussion was really disturbing. She said, I'm glad you helped her, but you've got to admit he has a point. I know she's just young and doesn't know better, but hopefully now she has learned her lesson and will carry a wrap with her so she can cover herself up. I said he was the one who needed to learn a lesson. Hopefully that he has no right to police women's appearances, but at the very least that he should keep those views to himself and not harass girls and women and that that girl had every right to ride the subway with the expectation that she would be treated with basic respect. Note again the focus on the fact that no man had done anything to help. Also, not that I agree with Santa's approach or even his message, but if you go out in public dressed in revealing clothing and have a nice body, you're going to get attention and is not always going to be the kind of attention you want. A very simple way to avoid this kind of thing is to cover up a little bit. If I go down the street in a tight tank top and a speedo, I'm greatly increasing the chances of people reacting to me both positively and negatively. Even if my intention is just to go to the gym, that doesn't mean I should dress like I'm at the gym when I'm actually in public. I then headed back on the subway towards home, shaking with adrenaline realizing how scared I'd been the whole time that he was going to hurt me. When I got home, I googled the guy and found out that he's a cult figure around the city, has been the subject of a graphic novel, a Vice article, a documentary, etc. He's often talked about like a humorous, kooky, and even endearing person. Unsurprisingly, he has some serious mental health issues due to an accident that left him in a coma, and some serious issues with women, probably connected to his girlfriend apparently leaving with their daughter, after he became ill, which, given the behavior I witnessed, was probably a good parenting call. He's banned from many places. His story sounds like a sad one, 
with some good lessons for how we as a society deal with mental illness. But that's not my point here. I'm sharing this so that girls and women in Toronto know that this guy's unstable behavior extends into sexual harassment and that you may very well not be safe around him. Wait, sexual harassment? I can't find any definition that would describe Xanta's behavior here as sexual in nature. If anything, his behavior was anti-sexual. I'm sharing this to express my anger that I had to put my own safety in danger to protect that girl, which I have had to do so many times before in similar situations over the years. Yes, because presumably some man should have put his own safety in danger, right? I'm sharing it to call out all the men who did nothing. Not because I expect men to fight him or otherwise live up to some kind of masculinity standard, but because I do expect that they will use their privilege and power in a situation like that to, at the very least, ask the girl if she was okay, ask me if I was okay, tell the guy to leave her alone, put their bodies between her and the man, push the alarm strip, take a photo of him for helping her to make a report if she wants to, acknowledge that the situation is even happening, something! Because it is totally understandable that the women in this situation may be in fear for their own safety in the presence of a man who is aggressively and exclusively targeting them because of their gender. This paragraph right here is why I made this video. She expects men to use their privilege and power in a situation like this. Privilege and power. Is this woman more crazy than Xanta? First, let me show you a video of how Xanta was likely acting. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Xanta. <Santa. laughs> yeah. How are you doing, man? Oh, You're looking good. Merry Christmas. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You know, I am the Toronto Xanta. Yes. I did over a million places all over the city. Santa Claus had shorts and boots, all flies, five miles, ten minutes, and everything. So oh my there. God! Yes. yes. Santa, so you're amazing. Was just waiting for the bus on the bus. No one's just passed. We're up to the trains. Wait for the trains. He's in about young Queen King front. John, please say something all over the place. Cool down a little bit. Check it out. I'm watching it, girlie. Check it out. The camera down. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Yes. Thank you, Mother. Here, look, Mother. Arr, arr. Mother, yes. Here, Father. Father, yes. Father, yes. Yes! <laughs> Look at the size of him. Every man on the train knew that if he got involved, he had to be prepared to fight Xanta. And the odds are pretty good that they would lose based on his size and muscles. She expects these men to put their very lives at risk to prevent a woman from being harassed. What exactly, I ask, is their privilege and power? Does she think if a man had stood up and told Xanta to stop, that he would have said, yes sir, and walked away? In reality, if a man had done almost any of the things that she had suggested, the odds of the situation moving from verbal to physical would go up immensely. The fact is, she knew that a woman getting involved was very unlikely to have to physically fight Xanta. There was of course a chance, and that's what makes her actions courageous, but much less of a chance than if she had been a man. It's pretty clear that from Xanta's own actions, his motivation is to protect women from pedophiles and rapists and voyeurs. So the odds of him attacking a woman are actually probably quite low. I'd also wager that our author has never heard of Kitty Genovese or the bystander effect. Essentially, what likely happened here is that everyone on the train thought that somebody else had already pressed the emergency button, and once this woman stepped in, they probably felt there was no need for them to escalate the situation further. And that's taking the author's story at face value. Based on the biases she showed, I wouldn't be surprised to find that Xanta's behavior wasn't quite as bad as she portrayed it. In any case, what we have here is another example of what happens when people's minds are warped by looking at everything through a lens of gender. 
rather than being proud of herself for doing a good deed and protecting an innocent person from a potentially dangerous mentally ill person. She's angry that men didn't act in the way she expected them to based on her imagined made-up ideas of their power and privilege. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I certainly learned a lot by researching it. Uh, feel free to take a moment and check out the links below. And as always, like, dislike, subscribe, and share as you see fit, and I wish you all the best.